Welcome to this episode where it is my turn to do a top five of uh, my favorite um, contents and media. We had our other boys here, Wilson, do his top five Godzillas. And Hi. Bradshaw, Eric Bradshaw, did his top ten with a few honorable mentions of his favorite Frasier episodes. Mm-hmm. So, my top five I'm going into is my top five episodes of a little show called Bluey. Oh. Um, and the reason behind this is I looked at a lot of people's either favorite videos or the videos that connected with a lot of different people. And this is, you know, growing up as, you know, a kid in the 90s, you watch like an episode of like Rugrats or something like that. And you're kind of just yeah. watching the babies do their shticks and mispronounce things that that's funny. But as you grow up, you start listening to what the adults are saying. And even as a kid, you're like, I don't know what they're referencing there. But then it just like clicks with you when you grow up like, oh my God, even like as a teenager, you rewatch an episode or something like that. And you're like, oh my gosh, I totally get that reference that the, the adults are talking about or whatever else and their relationships right. and dynamics. So it's, it's really interesting now as a, a parent to watch, you know, kid related content and connect more with like what is trying to message in a very subtle way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, so I'm going to go into a few episodes, um, five episodes, and then one that kind of relates to that idea of um, the process of making art in today's world. So the first episode I'm going to talk about is called Space. Space, 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 space. Space is an episode that is not featuring the main title character of Bluey, who is a Australian blue healer. It's a breed of dog, I guess mm-hmm. commonplace in Australia. Um, this episode is revolving around a character named Mackenzie, who is a like a, a sheepdog kind of. Um, a shaggy sheepdog and who is a, a boy that goes to the same kindergarten or you know school as the main character <clears throat> but space is a playtime kind of episode where the character of Mackenzie is playing with two other friends and it's um Jack is the other character and Rusty and Jack and Rusty have their own traits too Jack is a Jack Russell um, and he has some kind of ADHD that's been not specifically or overtly said in the uh, the episodes, but you can kind of get that idea as like a parent, like, oh, this kid's very hyperactive and whatever else. Um, but this episode revolves around Mackenzie playing with them, <clears throat> and they're playing spacemen. And Jack, <clears throat> the Jack Russell, knows a lot about space and kind of like, tells people like oh no that's not what that does or that's not what this person does so they're kind of directing these people or jack is directing everybody to play more realistically a space sim (laughs) um but Mackenzie wants to veer into his own kind of narrative so him as a dog he had this kind of uh traumatic episode when he was younger where he was playing on a, on a play place or a play set at kindergarten and the slide kind of turned him around or something like that that's depicted in the show. And he comes out of the other side of the slide after going down it and realizes he doesn't see his mom. And he's just like, Mom? And he realizes, like, and I've seen this happen a few times when some kid or, a, you know, even I've had this situation where I can't find... Uh, an adult or my friend or like I have this realization like oh I'm alone and I'm scared right so it depicts Mackenzie having this like maybe a PTSD um and doing it very subtly right and so the idea that Mackenzie is playing space and wanting his narrative to be 
oh, pretend that I'm stranded. I'm out, out, um, and you have to come find me or whatever. I'm out in the vastness of space by myself. And so some people have taken that as maybe Mackenzie has a, a undiagnosed depression as a, as a, as a kid, or maybe it is just the post-traumatic stress that he had from an infant. Um, so a lot of people are kind of divided on what that means as far as his character and what, you know, what does it mean when kids are playing by themselves or looking like they're not uh, engaging with other kids. So it was a very interesting episode, a deep episode, and they're all going to get way deeper from here. Um, and very interesting. And I, I would want you guys to maybe check some of these out just to get that understanding, like look at it from that angle. Because right. there's a few episodes early on that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is way deeper than I would have thought. And doing it within the time frame of eight minutes is a miracle. It's kind of crazy how they, they got all these ideas out there just to get that simple idea. Like, okay, this person has this kind of issue and they're they're working through it through play. Um, and it's, uh, it's a very good episode and uh, pretty well done. Um... The next episode, and these are in no particular order, so that one was kind of deep because it, it's one of the only ones that kind of has not the main character in it. Um, the next one is called Copycat. And these are dogs, but they're playing a copycat game where the the dad, and I relate a lot to the dad because he's, he's kind of like a cent, the center of the, the fun aspects of these kids playing games, and they all have these specific games they play and unbeknownst to the dad he always has to jump in at a weird time to just pick up on a game that he has no clue what the rules are so he just goes along with it um so copycat is it starts out kind of playful so the main character bluey is copycatting the dad and so the dad is doing really strange things to stop his daughter from copying him but they stumble upon a dead bird, or a dying bird, I should say. Um, and so they, it drastically switches gears into describing through play the concept of death. <laughs> and so what they do is they find this dead, this dying bird um, on the ground. They bring it to the vet. They sit around at the vet's office for a while and they, the vet comes back out, and it's this, what is that dog? The uh, the corgi, with kind of stubby little legs, and the stubby leg character corgi comes out and saying, oh, "I'm sorry, I'm afraid the the bird died." And the main character just kind of like, you know, looks, like maybe it's not processing what that means, but they're like, "Oh, okay." And so they, Bluey takes that idea that she just started learning about and incorporating that and saying like okay I'm gonna have my sister who is the, the bingo bingo is gonna play the the part of the dying bird and see how I can kind of make this different or how to like change the outcome of what happened in that scenario and just knowing that the parents wanted the best for the kid like oh you want to play through this okay then they, they go in they bring the sister back and the, the sister pretending to be the bird and they're like oh the bird's fine she'll be okay and then bluey's like no i want i want the bird to actually die and the parents are like oh you sure and she's like yeah I, i'm sure and so she she does and so like they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Then the bird's dead. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. And then Bluey just kind of sits there again. And you don't know what's, what she's processing, really. But she knows, like, that's kind of the point of life is to experience death. And it was like, they were saying so much. And like I said, these are all very short episodes. All like eight minutes, eight and a half minutes. To get these big concepts out there in such a small amount of time and then you you realize like okay what does this mean what does this episode kind of want the viewer to understand about 
death and you kind of just you feel bad for their realization that oh sometimes the amount of effort you put into helping somebody recover you know might not result in a good outcome you might just feel realize like oh they're dead and there's nothing you can do anymore and that kind of emotion you feel like well i did everything i could but i I, nothing good came out of it or you know I can I can understand that but I don't know if that was supposed to be the message that kids would take away from that but as an adult you see that and so yeah that's another one that's that kind of changes gears on you and throws you for a loop at first and you're like oh that's kind of deep and kind of uh, brave for them to put in a ch- children's show for sure um, oh yeah now we're getting into some that are some of my favorite and some that are, you could say are like the quintessential ones if you want to like just have a good time watching and I've I've told people to watch one of these and it'll be my 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 one that I end on. Um, so the next one's called Flat Pack. So Flat Pack um, meaning like the parents are putting together a porch swing like a a swing that just, you know, has kind of like a, it's like a bench and it's on like a a frame kind of thing. And it's just a swing that you put on your porch and they're throwing out all these boxes and other parts that they're, they're taking out and they're just throwing into the yard, like a styrofoam bag of, you know, packing peanuts and things like that and other cardboard pieces. And so the, the kids decide to play with all those excess pieces um so blue and bingo they start you know using the big box that everything came in and they're pretending like oh let's just pretend that they're doing the the evolutionary chain of like into humans essentially but it's being played by dogs so what they're doing is like it's also touching on the idea of death and even the afterlife towards the end and this is where like i was being like oh my gosh they're doing this very like by beat like they're playing all these different levels of of um evolution so they first start out like hey let's pretend we're 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 like fish just like floating in the water and so they're just like you know floating and at the time bluey the older one is pretending to be the mom of bingo the younger sister and so the mom is telling the baby, like, okay, you gotta, you gotta do this, you gotta, you know, whatever, being very motherly um, to keep the baby safe. And as they go through the stages of evolution, they get older and older as they play. So by the time they go into the cave, which is essentially the box that the chair came in or the bench came in, they're drawing little cave paintings. And like let's pretend we're like using tools and stuff like that and building stuff and so by the time the episode gets to the end the the mom is like an old elderly you know or she's pretending to be really old so she's using like a little um paper towel roll as like a cane you know or a piece that came from the box mm. as a cane and um all the styrofoam has been turned into like almost looking like skyscrapers or futuristic structures, right? So it's in the far off future. And by that time, so yeah, the the daughter or the the little bingo character is an adult and uses one remaining piece of cardboard to make a spaceship. And so bingo jumps in the spaceship and flies off, right? And by that time, you see that they finished the the chair swing and after bluey sees bingo fly off in this little spaceship um she's like well what do i do now and then she hears from behind her you know through this weird elaborate styrofoam archway come over here and then come sit with us and they're all the the mom and dad are just sitting which is supposed to be their version of like the afterlife or heaven and that's punctuated by when Bluey, there's a shot of Bluey reaching out her hand to grab kind of like this godlike figure, which is basically her mom, 
to come up onto the porch and sit down. And she just watches from like this heavenly kind of, you know, sunsetted Australia of her daughter kind of just zooming around the backyard in her little spaceship. And the, the dad just kind of ends the episode by saying, wow, this is heaven. So it's kind of, it, it's kind of ham fisted in that respect, but the idea of like coming up with these ideas of evolution, but then also kind of relaying it back to like the beauty and majesty of the world and, you know, what we make of it, you know, it's like heaven, like the best moments are seen as like those parts of your life that you treasure and like that's a heaven for them. That one was very good, very well put together and if you're, you know, in tune with that, you see the evolutionary, you know, um, steps and things like that, but then punctuated with what do you do after, you know, you're done evolving as a species. You just, you kind of venture off into the, you know, unknown as, you know, explorers into the vast universe and things like that. And I've, that is a kind of theme for a lot of episodes, there's, like I said, space. That one was, you know, about a stranded astronaut that wants to be playing alone and feeling depressed or PTSD or whatever. And then there's this one where the, at the end, the character flies off into space. Um, so I'm just going to move on to the next one. And this one was a toss-up for me because there's there's a few of them that kind of evoke this sense of, like, um, those summer vacations you would have as a kid where you meet with these like one-time friends at the local, you know, spot. I don't know. There's like a little public arcade space at a lake or a campground that you just hang out and there'd be kids there and everybody would be like talking and you'd find people your age that you'd hang out with and play with, at least in my case. I don't know about you guys. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's this episode just called camping and camping camping and bluey meets up with this other dog who's a, a a labrador from french canada as as far as i could tell from people describing the episode um that bluey meets up with them and they're only speaking french and it's funny that in the french version of the cartoon the character is just speaking English. <laughs> so <laughs> um, the character is Jean-Luc. And um, Jean -Luc. They, they find each other and they're just playing and they don't know how to speak to each other. So they're just like pretending they know what each other is doing. So they decide the first thing they do is kind of find an acorn and they're like, hey, we should bury this so it can grow into a tree. And then you hear the French Canadian dog just say something in French, and <laughs> Bluey's just like, "All right, cool." <laughs> they just do that, so it's like a All right. it's, it's like a communication barrier that you know you don't you don't really care about it, but you're just like you're playing with this person because the only other person your age that you can connect right. with in some way. So they they do this and they play along. They do this thing where they're just they're hunting, they're on the hunt for Daddy Pig. And the whole episode, the dad character, the dad character is not talking at all. The dad, like, it's a funny little running gag in this episode that the dad is just grunting and snorting like a pig. <laughs> so, like, maybe he's got like <laughs> allergies or something like that because that's what happens when I go camping. I get hella allergies. Yeah. And so they're they're hunting the daddy pig, and the daddy pig always goes down to the creek to get some water or something like that, and they jump out with their like they got mud painted on their face and they're like in like they have tribal gear and they're chasing this pig and all the dad's doing is like going rah, rah. and they uh they eventually fake him out and capture him um but throughout the day like they they come back day after day to continue like setting up their 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 space and they every day they hunt the pig but sometimes the pig gets away until one day, like, Bluey says goodbye to Jean-Luc at the end of the day. And you can tell Jean-Luc's character was, like, kind of sad, saying something in French, saying, like, oh, it's my last day here. I'm going home now. 
and Bluey's just all happy, like, yep, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like, they don't know what each other's saying, so the next day, Bluey gets up and does not find Jean-Luc at the campground, and she's just like, looking for him, looking for him, looking for him. And at night, she's talking to her mom, like, you know, I, I really miss Jean-Luc. And the mom says something really profound that I want you guys to watch, but she says something like, you know, sometimes people come into your life for just a short amount of time and they, you know, make a really big impact for just that amount of time and you'll never see them again. Or, But you can always hope somewhere down the line you'll meet up with them again, right? And so... They do a flash forward by, if you remember, they planted the na an acorn, um, and so that little mound of dirt, you watch it time lapse real quick, um, turn into a tree, and then a older Bluey character shows up with a book, coming to sit down by the shade of the tree and read a book. And so Bluey just sits down, and then you hear off screen a little, like, more adult kind of sounding voice or maybe like a puberty voice say hello bluey in like a french canadian kind of voice and so it's the grown-up mm -hmm. version of jean-luc and that's all they oh, that's, that's all they they do it's like they sh they look at each other and they their tails start wagging so it's it nice. that was a very heartwarming part because like, that's never been the case <laughs> you know i've never remembered playing or like never, I do remember having those situations where I'd play with somebody that I would play with just for that season and that, that amount of time. It would be brief, but you know, right. I can't picture their face. I haven't seen them since, but I do recall moments like that in my life. Yeah. So, but seeing that kind of seren serendipity thing happen where after a long time has passed, you still remember somebody because of that that first interaction you'd had with them. Um, it was kind of poignant and, and kind of nice. Yeah. I like that. Um, sounds nice. Yeah. And it a lot sounds. of these, li uh, they leave you with this kind of sense of like, that's really sweet. It's, it, right. it leaves you in a good emotion. Um, and that brings me to another episode. That was episode four think so i've talked about four already here's my fifth one this is my last one i'll do a little bit of um honorable mentions or ones that i think you should watch the one yeah. that's the quintessential top one you should watch first is called sleepy time oh hell yeah dude. i don't know if any of you have seen this episode or know anything about blue nope. but this is I one just like sleepy time this is the one <laughs> you should watch proud show because it it's yeah. it probably I don't know. You could relate to it, maybe in some in some All respects. Right. Sounds like I could already. It's uh, it's what you'd go through as a parent, and this is not for you, Bradshaw, I guess, but I guess maybe for your parents at some point in your life, <laughs> that you'd have yep. to stay up with a kid, like when they're being sleep trained or just having nightmares or whatever else. Something always happens in the middle of the night, like oh, I had an accident. Uh, there's a monster outside my room. <laughs> um monster under my bed whatever you have as a parent have to like deal with these weird sl like sleeping schedules weird sleeping things that happen throughout the night and this depicts that pretty well within bingo the sister character how she's having trouble sleeping and always needs to be sleeping with a parent or mom or just somebody she can't just sleep on her own she needs a lot of help. Um, and this this whole episode is scored by uh, a composer that... I don't know if... I forget if it's like Holst or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the guy that did The Planet? The Planets, yeah. So The Planets, yeah. uh, Jupiter, uh, Bringer of Jollity or whatever. You know that, that mm -hmm. song? It has yeah. like that kind of cello, that sweeping kind of song Hello. it's yeah. very like it it brings you to that place of like it's sleepy sounding but it's like really epic and 
it has a lot of high concepts in the episode too where bingo the character you know is is floating in space another space kind of themed thing where since it's talking about it the song is planets and it's the song jupiter um which is funny because the, the how i dive into it and we're going to get pretty analytical is that jupiter is conveyed by the dad because um throughout the night bingo is like restless cannot fall asleep sleepwalking whatever just doing anything to try to settle down so meanders into the parents bedroom the mom kind of gets kicked out and the mom kind of falls asleep in one of the kids beds and then the other kid bluey jumps into the mom mom's position or the mom's um bed with the dad and so the kids are kind of like playing in their sleep like you know how you see dogs sleep and they're kind of like running you know or like chasing rabbits in their sleep um so they're doing that and they're kind of like kicking their dad and this has happened to me i've had kids just you know kick me or headbutt me or you know just not be settled down when they sleep they sleep pretty violently <laughs> kind of like how dogs do oh um, yeah so as they're doing this in bingo's dream state in her dream soul is actually frolicking on the surface or if, if you could say a surface of jupiter so like the face of jupiter it's depicted as like a sloshy kind of wet planet but it's it's all gas but it's depicted like that because they're running on their dad um so you see the depiction of them in their dream stole in the dream state just kind of running across jupiter the dream soul and then when bingo jumps into the red spot it's actually the dad's groin and the dad gets a hit and he kind of wakes up like Ooh, kind of like because that happens um yeah so after that hijinks happens bluey's got to get up and go potty right so kids that's always a big thing they got to get up in the middle of the night go potty they need help and so the dad has to sit in the bathroom and help bluey do that and in bingo's dream soul she's depicting that her you know she lost her favorite cuddly toy when she's sleeping um so she's kind of Can't alone she's alone she's cold in space without this comfort animal to help her fall asleep um so the mom kind of like wakes up realizing that nobody's sleeping in the kids room so she goes back to her bed to see what's going on she finds the 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 sleep animal or the little bunny rabbit i guess stuffed animal and brings it back to bingo as she's sleeping um and the whole time this little twinkling lullaby version of the jupiter song is playing to kind of lull you um and and then what happens is that she gets kind of pushed off onto mercury like the first you know planet closest to the sun or whatever you know like it's right there and so what happens is that the sun is being actually depicted uh as the mom character or you know the mom the mom's voice rings through in the dream um saying something along the lines of like um i'll always be there for you of some of some sort and even though you can't see that i'm here i'll always be there to comfort you and it helps bingo because the mom finds the stuffed animal and brings it back to her and that the mom actually like gives her a little hug before she leaves and by that time the mom finds that her bed is completely empty because the dad and bluey are kind of asleep in the bathroom <laughs> to, trying to figure that out so the mom is having this peaceful sleep in her own bed all by herself and the whole episode was about how bingo couldn't fall asleep on her own and she has like this really profound moment in her dream state saying like i gotta go now um i'm a big girl now and she's coming to terms that she can actually fall asleep on her own without any help from a parent or whatever and oh. so she the, the episode ends with the sunrise 
which is the mom essentially as the score is sweeping to its crescendo the sun is just peeking up as bingo is all peaceful peacefully sleeping in her own bed and all is good in the world and that was a longer probably description of the episode than the episode so <laughs> that is one you should definitely watch because it, it goes by like that and just you get this big concept and this awesome score and it kind of leaves you being like that is just the sweetest freaking thing about what it what it's like to be a kid growing up trying to sleep through the night and a parent dealing with that and what that means and yeah the show has those episodes like every season there's only three seasons but there's like 50 episodes because they're so short so you could watch you could watch these and binge watch them and find something in each one of them that's it's yeah. tied closely to like a concept that's my uh, and like I said I had other ideas of top five I just think this one is kind of different than your guys's very different than your guys yeah. is a different angle i think it's cool yeah, yeah that's okay totally okay that's um, part of the the part of the joy of this and that's exactly why i chose this because i look at these from a different perspective because i can watch these two like they're they're quick it's not jarring like a like i'm watching fucking coco melon where it's just singing songs and just right. the kids aren't getting anything out of it no you know mindless high, mindless noise yeah, just to have on the background to pacify a kid for a little bit. These actually have substance and there's a point to them and they're done very well. And the studio is great. And the voice acting is awesome. And it's actually voiced by real kids. And some of the depictions of like, um, there's like some big names attached to it. Like Lin-Manuel Miranda plays a horse in one of the episodes. Like, <laughs> he's just a horse. Um, and there's a few other like you know big names that are attached to the some episodes that just play a little little bit like uh i think natalie portman was the voice of a nature documentary person on tv that just talks mm -hmm. about whales and so she's just you hear natalie portman's voice coming out of the tv not a character it's just and not even named it's just her voice and you wouldn't know until you like look at the credits like oh natalie portman was just voice of documentary host it's like okay all right i wouldn't have known that but she's just talking about yeah, right. whales um so there's a lot of people that are you know involved with like good quality kids content and talking about you know rugrats and all these other content when we were growing up and how you can look at them now with a different set of eyes and maybe a new appreciation um so that's it's still alive and well but you have to look for it and i mean bluey is has grown crazy since i you know i think it was one of the first things i put on when we got disney plus right i was like oh what's this it was like first let's watch the mandalorian because that was like one of their kickoff shows when i got disney plus and i'm like all right we have a little daughter and a baby let's put on some bluey and yeah. at that point, it was just like the first episode or first season, I should say. So we just kind of binged that, just kind of put it on and didn't think of any, didn't think anything of it at the time. But then like, as I kept watching it, I'm like, oh my God, these are like really quick. And I started like watching some of them. I'm like, oh my gosh, these are actually pretty engaging and they have good messages and they kind of help you as a parent to like come up with like play ideas too. Like right. there's some really, um, interesting play concepts and ideas that they come up with as a family to to get people stop to stop watching tv and kind of get together and be more of a family and do something together instead of all right go watch this for a bit while i go do something else so yeah definitely yeah. go go give those ones a watch oh um, yeah I let like us that. know let us know your uh your favorite episodes maybe a lot of people watching will definitely see this and be like oh yeah those are definitely my favorites too or have something to say never seen a single episode of, of bluey and now i've got a place to start so i'm ex i'm yeah. i'm i'm i've i'm you excited some children's to start too. you I got do. some children's too you can throw them in yeah basically go out there give it a watch if it's not your cup of tea totally fine um it's just kind of something to to have for whatever you know you want it 
to either pacify a kid for a couple minutes or, you know, watch it for its spectacle or its um, interesting approach to talking about a certain topic. But yeah. yeah. Something something some of us uh, childless folks might not have been a, as aware of. <laughs> We're like, I'd, I'd seen a lot of things like stories about Bluey or some things that'll pop up on social media or saying like parents being like, I don't like I this is not being facetious, but I love Bluey like shit like that. Like I see it all the time. And I was like, what is it about this show? Why? But now I've had it explained and now I get it. and I'm interested. You know? Yeah. Um, also, do you guys... I know Broadshow, you've watched Funhouse. Wilson, have we talked about Funhouse? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you've watched Funhouse from time to time. Um, I've, I've watched it quite a bit, actually. Um, the the main two uh, married couple, Elise and James. Yep. Elise, yep. in a few episodes, I remember her talking about Blue. Oh, really? And I'm like... Oh, yeah, yeah. They just... I mean, she would drop some kind of, you know, nod to it or reference just the show not like something specific but just the show and like yeah. oh she watches it that's cool like so it's it's not just for no um, no people with kids because i know they don't have a kid they have uh, a dog or something like that uh benson went rip a few years ago or a couple years ago yeah this was this uh, was that benson. this was around that time though that they were talking about it oh, okay so i mean they had a dog at the time they probably have a new dog too or they foster maybe so. Um, but yeah, they they talked about it. A few other people have talked about it. Yeah. Um, that don't Elise, have that Elise don't have, have kids. Appreciation so. for stuff like that. So. Yeah, like she's into Muppets and other things too. Muppets. So. Murpets. Murpets. So yeah, it's not just oh, yeah. for the people with the kids. No. it's for people that can appreciate good animation and good storytelling and telling stories oh. in that time frame. That's tough. Like, like that's and it's it's defeat. like like stuff that we learned as we got older, where it was like shows that we watched and stuff and then we get older and then we realize there's a whole other shit going on that we didn't pick up on as kids necessarily right stuff that like the parents could get into or like is a universal thing that anybody could like you know yep and we'll be back with more in a future episode so stay tuned for that hit the like button keep uh, being notified hit uh, by hitting that bell ringing that bell and uh, subscribe for more of our content um yeah if you like this stuff leave a comment saying like what you liked about it yeah we'll we'll try to converse with you or talk about your comments in the future episode i have no problem with that tell us your favorite top uh, godzilla episodes or your favorite fraser episodes or your favorite bluey episodes um or your favorite Bluey Crazy crossover episodes? Yeah, maybe Kelsey Grammer dreamed Where they talk an about Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. Where Bluey it pretends to be a kaiju destroying Seattle, mm-hmm. and Bingo is if, pretending to be Niles. If Bluey wants to do a screonk, who's to stop them? Exactly. Nobody. Not even Dad can stop that screonk. No, Dad's not powerful enough. Nobody's powerful enough. No. Cannot stop the screonk. And I don't know what to do with those screonks and those scramble days. <laughs> when you He's started, screonking again. <laughs> you started this conversation and you were saying, like, it's my turn to make a top five. And I thought you were slipping into Mayor Vaughn. I was like, it's oh, God, turn. we're going off the rails already. I made a top five, too. It's my, it's my top five now, Chiefy. <laughs> Why are you calling me Chiefy? <laughs>